Senator from Mississippi. Mr. President, yesterday the government of Guatemala took a decisive step toward regaining sovereignty. Guatemala revoked the visas of and deported 11 UN personnel working for the International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala, better known by its Spanish acronym, CSIG. Chartered in 2006 to help the Guatemalan state fight corruption, CSIG had morphed into a modern-day United Nations proconsul, selectively administering justice and abusing power in ways never intended. Voices on the political left, both here and overseas, will no doubt decry the decision by the duly constituted government of Guatemala. But I take the floor of the United States Senate this afternoon to state plainly my emphatic approval of this action by our Guatemalan friends. Prior to yesterday's action, Guatemalan President Jimmy Morales had previously announced that CSIG's mandate would not be renewed after, seven, after September 3rd of next year. The President's decision marks a logical and welcome step toward ending CSIG's presence in Guatemala. Ultimately, an independent country has the, the right to decide if and under what terms a supranational institution can administer justice within its borders. CSIG was never meant to be permanent, and no country could accept an unending infringement on its sovereignty. Certainly, we in the United States would never consent to having an international body accountable to no one run our judicial system here. Our Guatemalan friends have determined that it is time for CSIG to leave, and they have a right as a sovereign nation to make that decision. The initial reasons behind CSIG's presence in Guatemala cannot be disputed. Like many Latin American countries, Guatemala had suffered from pervasive corruption, and its government was in ruins from a decades-long civil war. Criminal enterprises colluded with politicians, military officers, and other government officials to bribe, cheat, and steal. Mafias with deep tentacles into the state acted with such impunity that Guatemala felt compelled to ask for outside help. In 2006, Guatemala and the United Nations signed an agreement meant to support, strengthen, and assist Guatemalan institutions responsible for investigating crimes committed by so-called illegal security groups and clandestine security organizations. Although CSIG enjoys complete functional independence, the agreement stated that CSIG must discharge its mandate in accordance with, the, with Guatemalan law and the provisions of the Constitution. Regrettably, this proviso has not been followed. Despite noble goals, it has become apparent that CSIG is not being held accountable to either Guatemalan law or the United Nations. As the largest financial contributor to the United Nations, the United States has an interest in investigating the credible allegations that CSIG was grossly overstepping its mandate. After all, the American taxpayers were largely financing this enterprise. The questionable practice of CSIG and its unelected leader have been reported in our national papers. The Wall Street Journal's Mary Anastasia O'Grady has been a close observer of Colombian jurist Ivan Velasquez, who serves as CSIG's commissioner. Ms. O'Grady states that under his leadership, there is strong evidence that CSIG routinely flouts the rule of law and tramples civil liberties in violation of the Guatemalan Constitution. His methods cannot be supported by a republic that pledges allegiance to transparency and human rights." End of quote. Powerful institutions have a tendency to amass more powers to themselves and stretch their authority far beyond their legal mandates. Even its most strident supporters have acknowledged that CSIG now essentially answers to no one and needs to be reformed. Nowhere is this contention better supported than the CSIG-backed persecution of the Bitkov family on behalf of the Russian government. For all its flaws, which are numerous, CSIG's decision to conspire with Russia 
is the most outrageous. Igor and Irina Bitkov built a successful paper mill company, the Northwest Timber Company, in Russia's Kaliningrad enclave. This rare example of successful private enterprise in Russia was once valued at nearly half a billion dollars. But success comes with a price in Putin's Russia. In 2005, a senior officer of the state-owned Cerber Bank demanded that the Bitcoin sell him a controlling stake in their company. Imagine. An offer the Bitcovs refused. Two years later, the Bitcovs' 16-year-old daughter, Anastasia, was kidnapped, drugged, raped, and held until the Bitcov family paid a ransom. In April 2008, three Russian state banks, VTB, Server Bank, and Gazprom Bank, forced the Bitkov's company into bankruptcy by calling in immediate repayment of nearly $160 million in loans. Traumatized and threatened with detention and death, the Bitkovs decided to flee Russia. More death threats followed as Moscow opened a criminal case in 2009. The Bitkovs eventually emigrated to Guatemala after paying a legitimate law firm for Guatemalan passports with new identities for their protection. The Bitkovs settled into a new life, blessedly free from Russian harassment and intimidation. Igor and Irina began teaching at a local school. Anastasia began to heal from her ordeal, and a son, Vladimir, was born in 2012. The reprieve was short-lived. VTB, one of the Russian banks, collaborated in 2015 with CSIC and the Guatemala, Guatemalan Attorney General to arrest the Bitkovs for passport violations. Detained in appalling conditions, Anastasia was denied medication and had a nervous breakdown. Three-year-old Vladimir was sent to an orphanage for 42 days without contact with his parents or appointed guardians. Eventually freed by court order, Vladimir returned to his family with an upper respiratory infection, conjunctivitis in both eyes, and clear physical and psychological abuse. This is modern day CSIG in Guatemala. Under the direction of CSIG, the Bitcovs were sent to trial in February of 2017. The Guatemala Guatemalan Court of Appeals, however, enjoined the Bitcovs prosecution, stating that the family was not criminally liable for passport violations. Despite this injunction, a lower court at the behest of CSIG went ahead with the case and eventually sentenced Igor Bitkov to 19 years and Irina and Anastasia to 14 years in prison. Let me repeat, 19 years and 14 years for passport violations. Passports that they believe were legitimate based on legal advice they had been given. For infractions that usually are settled with a fine at worst. And all in collaboration with CSIG and the Russian accusers. Following more convoluted legal wrangling, Igor Bitkov was released on house arrest in May. But inexplicably, Irina and Anastasia remained in jail. More injunctions, more appeals, more tortuous legal proceedings. Irina and Anastasia were finally released on bail in mid-June. This is CSIG in Guatemala. Pushed by CSIG, the Constitutional Court, the highest court in Guatemala, Guatemala ordered a retrial for the Bitcovs, which began last week and supposedly continues. American taxpayers who are footing the bill for CSIG have a right to ask Commissioner Velasquez and his CSIG team, is this the way to fight corruption in Guatemala? In short, CSIG, under the direction of Commissioner Velasquez, has gone from fighting corruption to doing Vladimir Putin's dirty work. 
going even so far as to persecute victims of corruption like the Bitkovs. The Bitkov affair demonstrates how badly CSIG has gone astray and why President Morales is right to want it out of his country. CSIG was established to help investigate and prosecute mafias entrenched to the state and able to act with impunity. And yet it gets involved in a passport violation case against a family clearly fleeing Russian persecution. CSIG is supposed to be above reproach, yet it collaborates with a state-owned Russian bank that incidentally is currently under U.S. sanctions. CSIG is doing the bidding of Putin's henchmen, acting as the long arm of Russia's dictatorship. The intervention of a Kremlin-controlled bank shows that influencing CSIG is a part of the Kremlin's broader campaign to exert pressure across Latin America, and we ought to be concerned about that, Mr. President. Earlier this month, Ms. O'Grady wrote in the Wall Street Journal that the creeping intervention from Moscow is designed to damage U.S. interest by destabilizing liberal democracy. Admiral Craig Fowler, the commander of U.S. Southern Command, told Senate Armed Services Committee that Russia is flooding Latin America's internet, social media, and television outlets with original and reproduced propaganda to sow doubts about U.S. intentions. Russia has also provided crucial financial support to the Maduro, the infamous Maduro regime in Venezuela and competes with the United States to provide military support to regional partners. Another strategic competitor, China, is also seeking to influence important U.S. partners in Latin America. China has provided more than $140 billion in Belt and Road Initiative loan commitments. Beijing is now Latin America's second largest trading partner. Although CSIG once played a significant role in exposing and prosecuting serious corruption, it has now fallen victim to Lord Acton's famous observation that power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. President Morales has made a decision as the duly elected sovereign, uh, as the duly elected head of a sovereign country that he will no longer tolerate an increasingly neo-colonial force. The United States should stand behind this decision. CSIG was never supposed to stay indefinitely. This move by the Guatemalan government does not absolve its own responsibility to fight corruption. Indeed, we should demand a redoubling of these efforts. As a critical country in the Western Hemisphere, a return to pre CSIG conditions would be unacceptable. This is the chance for Guatemalans to work toward the justice that CSIG abandoned with its complicity in Moscow's vendetta. This should begin with an end to the Bitkovs, Bitkov family's long nightmare. Their ordeal has gone way beyond a miscarriage of justice, and with CSIG gone, Guatemala must do the right thing without further delay or excuse. In conclusion, Mr. President, the duly constituted government of Guatemala has made the right decision and should be congratulated for yesterday's action. The country's leadership took a necessary step in asserting its sovereignty and in ending a dysfunctional relationship with CSIG a well-intended agency which has exceeded its mandate and outlived whatever usefulness it may initially have had. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.